Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Mold Talks. I'm your host, Michael Rubino, and today's special guest is Tammy. Tammy, thank you so much for taking time out of your very busy day to be here with us to help uh, shed light on this important topic. I'm very, very excited to be here. I'm really all about awareness, and I and I want I you know want to thank you for having the platform for those of us to share our experience when it comes to you know being the best version that we can through our health. I thank you for being here and, and helping me fill this platform with such um, important messages here. You know, we talked a little bit offline earlier, and one of the things that we discussed was that this is not a usual episode in the fact where you know, you were impacted in your home or at your work environment or school, et cetera. Well, maybe work environment, we'll get to cover that a bit. But, um, you know, t- talk us through your journey. Tell us what you were going through where you finally found that four letter word mold. Well, it was not a journey that uh, was a quick one. That's for sure. It, it's like anything else when it comes to your health, it, it, they, things tend to creep up. And until it really hits you over the head where your health is severely debilitated and you are unable to do ordinary things in life, like get up and walk without feeling um, sick, you know, then you kind of take uh, action, right? So for me, um, originally it started through my breast implants and I had gotten uh, breast implants uh, over 30 years ago. And the, the, the ailments, the, the mysterious ailments started 15 years into having the implants. And when I say mysterious, Every doctor that I went to for whatever symptoms I was exhibiting, which could have been mysterious rashes, um, uh, for brain fog, fatigue, joint pain. Uh, my eyes felt like they were burning all the time. Uh, autoimmune issues. I had markers for lupus, um, uh, you know, neurological issues. I mean, the list goes on and on. And they, the doctors looked at me and said, it's all in your head. And wow. nothing's worse than having someone, a practitioner that you trust to say, this is all in your head. So time progressed, the symptoms became worse and and worse to the point where they were debilitating and I couldn't function. And I was on every medication known to mankind and it wasn't really getting to the root cause. And I had always uh, gravitated towards holistic approaches, more of a wellness approach, more of a naturopathic approach. Um, But at the time, doctors were administering steroid shots. They were giving me steroid creams. I mean, just inundating my body with pharma, right? making yeah. it just a band-aid. Uh, so fast forward to four years ago and I started seeing a naturopath and he said, you know, he, have you ever heard of breast implant illness? And I said, no. He said, look it up. And I looked it up and out of 150 symptoms, I had about 45. Wow. And the light went on and I decided then to have them removed. Long story short, COVID hit, you know, couldn't get it done. Uh, finally got them done. And when they removed the implants, they found mold on one of them. And after that, I was tested for mycotoxins, which is mold. I was tested for heavy metals, bacteria, funguses, viruses, and everything came back elevations. I mean, elevated levels of everything, specifically black mold. So what I then did was research the symptoms and found that all of these rashes that I was having, all of these skin issues that I was having, the headaches, the the eyes, all of this was because the mold was just leaching through my body and needed an exit route. So about seven months ago, my naturopath uh, tested my mold levels again. And she said, we need to take care of this. They're high. They're very high. Wow. And so I've been on a seven month protocol, um, you know, and to say it was, it's been easy is putting it nicely. <laughs> the first, as you know, with any protocol, you have die off symptoms and I, I got sure. worse before I got better. So we're going to be retesting next week, but it's really important to understand that mold is everywhere, right? Mold is in the water we drink, mold is in our environment. Um, the first thing I did was make sure my home wasn't the issue and it wasn't. Um, so I have a feeling it's a combination of the implants, which had the visible mold and possibly buildings that I walk in and out of. So here I am now. <laughs> now you said you said the implants had signs of mold. Did, did, did they ever have capabilities of testing it to see what type of mold or anything like that? Uh, no. What they did was it's so when you have it's called an explant. So there's mm-hmm. two parts to this procedure. Um, there is the explant, which is removing the actual implant. So what happens when a woman has implants placed in her body? Uh, obviously, our bodies naturally are fighting off a foreign object. 
So in order to protect us from the implants, over the years that you have the implants, if your muscle starts to form a capsule around the implant to protect you from the foreign invader. And the longer you have the implants in your body, the thicker and more dense the uh, capsule becomes to protect you. But then uh, there comes a point where your body can no longer fight it anymore and your body starts attacking itself, right? So mm -hmm. when they remove the implant, that's step one. Step two is removing the capsule, which is called a capsulectomy. If the surgeon doesn't remove both, if he only removes the implant, leaves a capsule in, don't run from that surgeon. Don't even have it done because all the toxins and the mold and everything reside in the capsule. So what they do is they send the capsule away to pathology to see if there's anything cancerous or anything like that. That tested, that's where we saw the mold leaching. So when, when you remove the implant and the capsule and your body starts to naturally heal and go through a detox process, all of those pathogens that were attached to that capsule are now looking for a place to hold on to. They're looking for a host in your body. So what happens is if you can't find a host, it comes out of your body, your skin, your urine, your stool samples, whatever it is, it has to exit some way. And if your body isn't functioning well, it's going to stay inside your body and just circulate, right? So when yeah. you have high levels of mold, how does it usually show up as symptoms in your skin, your eyes, you know, your eyes feel like you're allergic to, to the air, what have you. So they tested it and there was some mold and I don't remember the strain, but when I did the, um, uh, when a naturopath ran, ran labs on me, it tested very high for black mold. Like she said, she's never seen it so high. Wow. Yeah. That's that, that is, I didn't see, I didn't know that you could actually test the capsule for mold and that's kind of how they identify that. Uh, that's well, very, other than the very obvious, other, yeah. Other than seeing it, the visible, I mean, it, he showed me pictures of it, right? It was, oh yeah. No, yeah. I've seen pictures of like the yeah. actual implant being covered in mold, uh, which is crazy to see. And obviously that's Spores, in your body. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's phenomenal. I didn't know they could test a capsule. That's actually really they interesting. And they can probably, yeah. they could probably correlate that with certain mycotoxins to see what exposure is coming from the implant itself mm -hmm. uh, versus, and it sounds like you had off the charts, black mold. We're not sure exactly if that's coming from the implant, but you also could be getting environmental exposure at work too. Yes, I do real estate for a living. So, you know, I obviously walk in and out of many different properties every day of every you know year. Um, and some of them were distressed homes, right? And, and, and I'm so sensitive to mold that I was, I was visiting my sister for Thanksgiving and she lives in Florida. And I was three months into the first phase of the, pro the heavy metal and uh, mold detox protocol. And I walked into her home and immediately could tell there was mold in the home. My body responded, it, it, all, the, all, all the symptoms just came back. My body was just fighting it. Even though I was on supplements to help get rid of you know, all of the mold and what have you, my body just immediately, my eyes started watering, my skin started feeling really flary and itchy. Um, and I even said to her, I go, I, I can't stay here, <laughs> you know, and they all looked at me like you're crazy. I go, no, really, I, I, I can't stay here. I mean, I'm, I can't. And then I decided I was, I looked around and I could see and I could feel and I could smell it. So now when I walk into properties, like for example, I did an open house last week and it was raining in San Diego and I walked in and I go, there's mold in this house. I, 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 I have to get, open the doors or something. So I'm, hypersensitive to it it's almost and i don't know if this is even possible but it's almost like i'm a, i'm allergic to mold and i feel like i'm allergic to it like physically and physiologically allergic to it well it is possible to be allergic to mold mm -hmm. for sure um mm -hmm. and there you know even if a mold is not allergenic and it's could be toxigenic or pathogenic too you know, your body can still have a heightened sensitivity to it mm -hmm. um putting you on that in that fight or flight mode Mm -hmm. You're on heightened sense of alert. It's really our body's way of telling us, you know, that something is dangerous nearby. And that's because you're, we have, we have this like stimulus response mechanism when we are alerted to dangerous environments, our bodies can't tell what quantities or whatnot is dangerous. Um, but that's where hypersensitivity comes into play, where you might not have a necessarily dangerous amount in your environment, but you did once before and your body's now telling you, Hey, this is a similar situation. Uh, yeah. and it's, 
it's very fascinating too, because now you have to kind of, as part of your healing process, you have to kind of back off that to where, you know, the normal amounts of mold that might be in your environment aren't, aren't going to be as harmful as what made you sick in the first place. And so it's like that retraining of your brain to kind of be more accepting of your environment from there on out. Right. How how has it been seven months in? Do you feel a difference uh, than from seven months ago? Yeah. You know, I, like like I'd share with you uh, prior to starting this, um, the die off symptoms were intense for two weeks. During the first phase, she had me doing specific supplements and the die off was very real. And I, you know, you, you hear about the Herx reaction, you know, it's a very common, but I, I didn't really know what that was until I was going through it myself. And I just felt exhausted. I felt fatigued all day. I had a headache. My body felt flu like, and then I felt great. I felt really good. And for me, the mold is because I tested high with a certain virus as well. And we, and we're trying to figure out, you know, because it's not shingles, it isn't these other things, but I'm, I'm still testing high for viral activity. And we were just, we're trying to pinpoint it. So she has me doing on the second part of this mold um, protocol, more antiviral, antifungal, antibacterial, getting rid of everything that's deeply rooted in the crevices of my body to eliminate them. And of course I'm doing, you know, uh, infrared saunas to help with that lymphatic massages Mm -hmm. to help with that, just to kind of flush the body. But overall I feel fantastic. However, now that I'm at the final stretch, I can feel that, um, that, and that, again, it could be the, it could be the die off symptoms still happening because it's a different set of supplements, but it feels very viral. This, this response that I'm having right now towards the end is like the final push. Um, so we'll see, you know, I mean, overall, I feel great, but my body, certain parts of my body still feel, and for me, it's my neck area, my upper back that feels, it's almost like a virus or some something trying to push itself through, but it tests fine for everything. You know, every test that we run says that everything's fine with the exception of this one virus. So she's treating it as such along with the mold. Well, our bodies are a confluence of things between viruses and bacteria Mm -hmm. and fungi Mm -hmm. and parasites and all Mm -hmm. heavy metals, as you mentioned, all kinds of fun things. And uh, it's a journey, right? It, you know, some people, some, for some people, it takes years to get to where they want to get to, which is, you know, in good health. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, But I just had a podcast recently where someone was like, you know, four months, 80% better. I mean, it's, it's, a miracle. That's amazing to hear. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's good that you're on the road. It's good that you figured yeah. all this stuff out. Um, I mean, let's, let's talk about it this way. You said when you went to the doctor, breast plant illness, it was the first time you even heard of it. You had to start researching it yourself. Yeah. I mean, this is a, a, a growing problem that I hear more and more about. Um, I'm imagining you've, you've met others in this community at this point. Um, yeah. what's the consensus? Is this, um, what are, what are people experiencing and how are people finding out about this? Well, it, it's interesting because when I found out about it, I would say it was probably four years ago when I found out about it. And then I had the implants for 28 years. So I was feverishly researching it. And there's this whole community out there. There's a Facebook page dedicated to breast implant illness. That is a worldwide Facebook group and you cannot have access to this group, unless a you've gone through explant or you're getting ready to go through explant, and the the community that that that, that the community of the breast implant illness, um, it, women, if you will, is vast. It's more than the common person thinks. In fact, there is a list of surgeons that is presented to you once you become a member of this group, where these surgeons believe in explant. They believe in it. In fact, their practice no longer does implant surgeries. They only do explants. There's a particular surgeon in Newport Beach. That is all he does. And then there are some doctors who, yeah, I mean, there, there might be some truth to it, but right. So there's a, but, but it's becoming more and more of a true illness. The FDA has banned, there's a, there's, there's a class action lawsuit uh, against one of the implant, breast implant manufacturers. There are doctors that are, you know, writing uh, journals on this particular, you know, illness. There are doctors that are going online and being very vocal about, yes, this is a real illness. This is, this cannot be disregarded. There is a slew of social media uh, pages where women who have gone through the same journey 
who are on talking about it. There are celebrity women who have done their explants live as it's happening, you know? And so it's not just a small group of women anymore. It is a huge part of the population. And the minute you make a decision as a woman to have them removed because the stigma for women to look a certain way is so strong that, that I have become friends with virtual strangers through social media because I've documented my journey and shared it publicly with anybody that asks me on social media and, and more. Um, I have women reaching out to me, direct messaging and, and asking me, how did you know what I, I'm, I'm afraid to do it? My husband said he would leave me if I did it. I'm oh, 70 wow. years old. Oh yeah. Just a, a litany of things. I'm 70 years old. I don't know if my body can handle it. I have all the symptoms that you know, I know I have it but I just can't do it. But then I also have those who say, you've inspired me to do it. So I'm going to do it, right? Because the biggest thing about breast implants is it's a foreign object in a woman's body. So yeah. with that comes the opportunity for bacteria, for fungi, for mold, for, for heavy metals, because even if the implant is saline, supposedly safe, which we're mine, because you know our bodies are comprised of saline anyway, it's still covered with silicone. And in the silicone is where all of the toxins are. So if that's in your body, our body's in constant fight or flight, because what it does is we, are, we shift into the adrenals, which works over time and our cortisol levels are going up. So it's just a parallel of things that just keep going. So the community, once we identify that, oh my gosh, I have the same symptoms, and oh my gosh, I explanted and I feel amazing. Some people just like with mold, their symptoms go away immediately and they're just, they, they're living life. Some women, the first three months feel great. Every symptom goes away and then the body naturally detoxes and it feels worse before it gets better. I am two years post explant and I'm still, I'm telling you, I am not a hundred percent because I'm still detoxing. However, I'm a hundred percent better now that I don't have them. So so it's very real. And, and the mold factor is a very big part of this. It's very big. Yeah. I, I uh, I'm actually looking at pictures right now as we're talking. Um, yeah. it, everyone, uh, everyone should do themselves a favor and just Google the words moldy breast implants. Mm -hmm. And it is crazy. You could actually see them. Looks yeah. like it's, it's both on the outside yep. of the and silicone inside. and yep. the inside of the silicone. Mm -hmm. Is that what did your doctor show you pictures of yeah. yours? My one of them, they both were uh, it, they both were kind of a brownish color. Yeah, that's, that's what it looks one like here. Them, brown. Yeah, one of them was more brown. It was a darker brown with you could see the specks of mold inside of it. That's yeah. so crazy. You know, one would never think, right? But if you think about it, you know, we have silicone around our bathtubs and showers, and yes. we always see mold behind them and you know, it's, it's definitely just because it's non porous doesn't mean that mold won't grow around it, um, or inside of it in this case. And that is, that is pretty scary to think, right. Cause then that's wow. just direct impact into our, into our internal body. Yeah. Well, it's I'm, insane. I am glad, I am glad that you're here and, and, and sharing this awareness with us. Cause I think, uh, there's certainly, there's certainly not enough mainstream wise talk about, the potential with mold and breast plants and breast plant illness. And I think that's really important um, because it's a, uh, it's a thing. I mean, I've seen a lot of people um, that have come forward and talked about this uh, it, to me, but not, not enough vocally uh, outward. Right. Right. So I think that's really important to cover. And then of course, when you have that and then you have exposure externally um, through your built environment through inhalation, but yeah. also dermal, right? So people don't know this, but mold's very small. It can easily pass through the skin um, and have an impact that way as well. Right. And then you're dealing with it internally, externally. It's 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 a cause of concern. It, it is, and you know um, whether I was see the, here's a challenge that I've been facing. You know, while I had the implants in my body and I developed these ailments that were considered mysterious. You know, then I justified it as, oh, I'm just having allergies. Oh, I'm just not feeling well. Oh, you know, just just trying to brush it off and not making the connection that they could be your breast implants. Because back then, breast implants and uh, the illness part of it wasn't a real 
it wasn't highly discussed at that time. This was back in the 80s, early 90s. And um, back then, the surgeons never said, oh, by the way, you need to replace them every 10 to 15 years. They basically said, oh, since they're sailing, you're fine. You don't have to worry about it, right? So now that women are becoming more educated and it's becoming widely discussed among many different circles across the world, you know, it, it, it is true now that I've had them removed that I have hypersensitivity to even mold food, like foods that have mold in it, right? Like right. certain, um, and they say, while I'm doing the protocol, I can't have grapes. There's certain food I can't have. I can't have cantaloupe because of the mold factor, which when you start to get down and you really ch hone in on foods that are high in mold, that people don't even realize that they're consuming it every day and they wonder why their body's responding the way it is and it's having an intolerance or a sensitivity. That right there, I, 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 I am so deeply connected now to what I put in my body, knowing that if I have those grapes, I will probably have a little bit of a response. So, and I, I actually will test it. Like I'll eat something that I don't normally eat to see how my body responds to it. And recently uh, I added uh, peanut butter, very clean peanut butter. It's made with olive oil and Himalayan salt, right? And I love peanuts. Peanuts are high in mold. Sure. Right. So I ate it for a couple of days, didn't feel anything. And then I'd say four or five days later, my skin started feeling this weird, like underneath, it's like a, like an itchy something, but nothing really showing on my skin. I started responding. I thought, I wonder if it was the peanut butter. So I stopped eating the peanut butter and it's getting a little bit better. So, you know, there are foods that are high in mold, cheese. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not just environmental. It's not just dermal. It's what we eat. Sure. No, I mean, it's a, it's a confluence of everything. You know, you can control what you can control. And I think that's, what's really important. Mm -hmm. uh, so you said you've been explanted for two years now going it's next month is two years. Yeah. Post explant. Yeah. That's amazing. And you've been, yeah. you know, detoxing for seven months. So you're, you're well on your way. Uh, you mentioned earlier about how you know, now they, the studies are suggesting and doctors are suggesting, uh, you know, if you get implants, you should change them every 10 years. Um, I, I understand that technology supposedly continues to improve in that area. Uh, there's a very real reason why some people may want to get them. Maybe not right. just for aesthetics. Uh, you know, breast cancer is a big thing right. where people uh, get them. What are your thoughts on that? What's the community saying? You know, are are people not people still recommending not taking a chance? Are there better, safer practices people can do? Would love your input on that. Uh, the answer is no, don't get them. And I can probably vouch for the community itself. Don't get them. Don't get them. There's too, too much evidence supporting the danger of having breast implants. And, you know, again, this comes from experiencing it. This comes from watching other women go through it. This comes from people around me that have watched my journey or haven't been inspired to have them removed because they see what I've been going through and they're like, Oh my gosh, my symptoms are the same. And the minute they have them removed, they're, they're better. It's just, there's no way that every one of us that have these mysterious symptoms and ailments that doctors can't put their hands on. It's all in our head that all of a sudden, once you remove a foreign invader, Yes. And everybody's journey is different. My journey, the first three months, I felt amazing. Every symptom went away, but they tell you your body will do a natural detox. And what that looks like for you is different for everyone. For me, three months went by, felt great. Then my body started rejecting all the toxins and it came through my skin. I was one big flare for almost a year. Wow. Every, my body was just rid with rashes I, I felt worse. I felt like I had the symptoms all over again because, again, the pathogens are exiting at some point, right? Then all of a sudden, January of last year, I said, oh, my gosh, I feel amazing. But then we started addressing the mold part of it. So I started the mold pro protocol midsummer because we couldn't figure out why my skin was still – what was going on with all this. So then they did the testing and um, found out it was the mold. So here we are now at the tail end of the mold protocol. However, there – whether the doctors and the, the plastic surgeons say, oh, but it's, it's, it's better now because we have a better product or, you know, it's no longer, this was not a dangerous implant because it's brand new and it's improved. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's a foreign object in a woman's body where our body already has to fight 
to keep it in balance just without an implant. Right. So that's that's a then you put these implants in where your body is resisting it and trying to protect you from it. Our body's going to overdrive. Right. And we can only do so much. Our livers become overburdened. Our kidneys are overburdened. The cortisol levels are off the charts. Our hormones are jacked up because of it. So here we are trying to figure out not just how to live without implants, throw implants in the mix. And it's and it's twice the work, if not three times the work and the symptoms and the quality of life. In my opinion, and I can say this safely for, for people that have explanted that are around me and my, my business partner explanted a year after I had mine done, she watched me go through it. My hairdresser watched me go through it. She explanted the consensus between the three of us. Oh my gosh, why did I, why didn't I do this sooner? Right. Wow. But, but you, whether the doctors say they're new and improved, they're going to say that because that is money for them. That is revenue for them. But the doctors who are no longer doing implants and are explanting, there are other ways. And a lot of it boils down to if you have cancer and you have to have your breasts removed, you know what? There's ways around it. You can do a lift. You can do other ways or other, I think, far more safer method, me, you know, methods in which you can rectify this whole notion that, well, I have to have something. You know, my husband won't. This is all society talking. This is society dictating how a woman should honor her body. And, and we were, God blessed us as women to look a certain way and be a certain way. We need to honor who we are and, and self-love and compassion and not feel the need to go have this done because comparatively speaking, society tells me I should. So the answer is no, I don't ascribe to it. The breast implant illness community, I can safely say would say, no, don't do it. And in fact, we would say, get them out if you have them. But I can't walk up to a woman and say, hey, you know what? Have you heard of breast? I'm not going to do it. If they come to me and ask me, absolutely, I'll, I'll share my journey. It makes a lot of sense. You, know, you talk yeah. about it just being a foreign object in the body. Um, it's, it's certainly not worth the risk, right? If you get sick, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. nobody wants to get sick. Uh, yeah. It makes a lot of sense. And, you know, there, there are so many problems in society. We'll never be able to cover them all in one episode, but you make a fantastic right. point. Um, it is society talking. You know, there's, it's really a way that of people wanting to be perceived a certain way. Um, yeah. That's what it boils down to. I, I really, true. very true. Yeah. I, I really appreciate the, the, the candor and the feedback, you know, on all of this stuff, because I think it's really important that people get this perspective. Um, yeah. There's a lot of people that might be sick right now walking around with breast implant illness and have mm -hmm. no idea. And I think yep. it's really important that they get an education on it. Um, yeah. Cause it very well could be just the, just the thing they need uh, to help them with their health goals, just like yeah. you were experiencing this. Um, and it's, it's taken a lot out of you, right? It was two years, uh, seven months. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, if you knew sooner, obviously you probably would have gotten it explanted a lot sooner. You have no, I mean, I, re, I look back on my life and I think, gosh, you know, you know, you, when, when you finally get to a point where you have that aha moment and then you kind of look back in time and you say, gosh, that time that I was sick, I really wasn't sick because of what I thought I was sick. It was really my breast implants. And then that time that I ended up, you know, having to go to the hospital twice, the emergency room, it wasn't because of what I thought it was. It was truly my body just, it finally got to a point where enough was enough. My body was attacking myself. So it presented itself in an autoimmune way, right? Where I couldn't even eat a certain food because my body was, you develop hypersensitivities and, and intolerances to certain foods. I got to a point where I could only eat low histamine food because my body was reacting and responding to everything. And then that goes back to the gut, right? So the gut wasn't healthy because of everything else working over time. The gut, the microbiome was, you know, certainly not solid. So everything was leaching through my body. So the first thing I had to do was heal my gut so that I could start incorporating variety of foods versus just low histamine foods. But I was on a low histamine protocol for a year and a half just to, just to keep the histamine levels down because my body was, was recovering from the foreign objects, all the toxins, the mold, everything that was in my body was fighting everything off. So my gut was a wreck. So it isn't just one or two things. It is systemically your body just shuts down. 
No, totally. I mean, it's uh, that bad inflammation plays a part in this. Yes. Dysbiosis, the gut yes. microbiome gets screwed Ego. up. That impacts yep. the brain. You get, yep. And there's a lot of things here. Did you develop a chemical sensitivity as well? I did highly. So the first thing I did when I found out more information, I dove, I dove deeply into, okay, food sensitivities. And then I noticed that fragrances would bother me. A certain cleaning products. And I, and I was that woman who always had a candle burning in my home and I couldn't figure out why I always had these migraines. Why am I always feeling these weird, like, oh my gosh, this is like a migraine just wouldn't go away and sinus headaches. Um, then when I dove deeply into all the sensitivities and I realized I was starting to become very sensitive to even dishwashing detergent that had fragrances to it. So I went free and clear of everything. I don't have any candles in my home anymore, nothing. And if there's a product touching my skin or in my home, it has to be free and clear of chemicals, parabens, sulfates. They have to all be EWG verified. There's nothing in my home down to my towels, down to my bedding, down to no plastics in my home, all glass, you know, my cookware, everything that I use is, is BPA free. Um, that's another thing. I'm allergic to BPA. I'm allergic to glyphosate, which, as you know, glyphosate is used in pretty much every all the produce, right? Mm -hmm. The weed killer and whatnot. So that there is a methodology to really chiseling down and finding out, OK, what is the root cause of all these things? It, they were the implants. And then as a result, systemically, everything started faltering. Now that I'm two years post. I am introducing foods that are histamine liberators or high in histamine, and I'm fine because I've healed the gut and I've healed everything else. Now, chemicals, still a huge sensitivity to me. Like I, I won't spray anything in my home. I'll use um, like, a, like an essential oil and water, you know, like a eucalyptus and that's fine. But anything synthetic, can't do it. Super sensitive and super, in, there's certain fabrics too that my body doesn't like. Like if it's like a wool feeling or if it's just like a cashmere, it just has to be a simple, like re recycled, free of everything, cotton or linen. Yeah. I mean, you know, at this point you're sensitive to the things that are bad for you anyway. Right. right. And so being right. able to cleanse these things from your home and create a healthier environment is, mm -hmm. is only going to help advance things along on your health journey right. here. Right. And, you know, they say in the breast implant illness community that for every Every year you've had the implants, it takes one month to fully detox. So when I had them removed, I had, it was 28 years that I had them. So they say for every month, for every year, it takes one month. So for me, it's going to be a 28 month detox and I'm coming up on 24 months. So I've got, I've already wrapped my head around it. It's going to be towards the end of this year and I'm going to be, I'm already a hundred percent, right? but it's really going to be a hundred percent towards the end of the year. It's really going to fine tune. How, um, when you, when you were kind of going through this, I think one of the big things about going through anything in life is having a good support system. I know you yeah. found a community, um, to, to help support you, but, you know, kind of go back before that. Uh, when you first discovered this, how supportive were people around you? Did, were people calling you crazy? Were doctors calling you crazy? Yes. What, what, what was that like? 10,000%. And again, it goes back to society, right? They shun. I, it happens to me now with my own family. Oh, Tammy, you're just hypersensitive. No, really, I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm not. My body is aware, right? It's aware of the foreigners. Um, back then, I remember date, I was dating a guy at the time and he said, are you sure you want to do this? And I said, 10,000%. I said, are you sure you're okay with me going through this? Because if you're not, that's okay too. Because if you're not, then we need to part ways now. Because I'm doing this. The, the breast implants don't define me. They don't, they, that, that is not who I am. That, 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 that's just a part of me that no longer exists. And it's, what's interesting, it was very symbolic when I had them removed. I felt like I'd returned to myself. Like I returned to myself and it was very liberating. It was very freeing. But at that time when I made the decision, the guy that I was dating, he was very supportive. He took care of me because obviously I couldn't do anything for a while. But I could tell. I could tell that that was the, that was going to be the straw that broke the camel's back for me because I could sense that he really wasn't supportive. He, although he was taking care of me. So as soon as I hit like the eighth, eight month mark post explant, 
I said, you know, this isn't working for me. So I went, I went about my way. And what happened is certain friends that I used to have in my life, I, I severed those relationships because that was a version of me. They identified with the old version and the new version was someone that I wanted to protect because I knew it was a journey. I knew it was going to require cleaning house and getting rid of things that no longer served me, hence the X plan, right? It no longer served me. So any relationship, any friendship, any experience, any opportunity, anything that I felt like no longer served me or identified with that former self, just, I, I got rid of them. And it wasn't a brutal, hey, get out of my life. It was just like our friendships just went different ways. And I had a whole new set of friends. And and now I've arrived at this space. And my family members, because my sister, it's interesting because right, she's had three implants done, three implant surgeries. And she's been sick, really, really sick for a long time. All of the symptoms. And I told her, I go, I'm not going to tell you what to do. You, you see what I'm going through. Just, just be mindful of your symptoms. And if they worsen, if they get, so uh, six months before I had mine removed, she had her third set put in and she lives in Florida. And every time I talk to her, she's sicker than sicker than sicker than sicker every day. And I, there's nothing I can do, but you know, so family members, except for my parents, thought, are you sure you want to do this? Are you sure it's, are you sure maybe it's in your head? Are you sure? No, it's not in my head. It's not. And the minute I was able to get up and start talking and doing things again, I did a podcast and I brought awareness to it. And I go, I am four months post explant and we're here to talk about it today. We're here to talk about it. The good, the bad, the ugly, the shame, the guilt, the doubt, you know, all of this, all of these emotions, all of this, the committee that's talking in your head about society and if you should it takes a lot of courage for a woman to a say i have breast implant illness and then make the decision to get them removed because the people around her will view her differently they'll either be very supportive and embracing about it or they will think she's crazy and that she's gone off the deep end either way the woman's decision to make that change for themselves takes so much courage and i commend all of the women and the men who are in their lives who agree that this is making my wife sick or this is making my girlfriend sick because trust me, it's, you have to have a partner and a, an ecosystem that supports you because they do think we're crazy sometimes, but we're not, we're probably smarter than all of them. <laughs> you know, I, I would agree to that. You know, when I look at yeah. this, it's um, you're right. There's first off, I won't pretend to know how much courage exactly is needed here, but yeah. I can only imagine it's, yeah. it's quite a lot. I mean, there's a lot of societal issues um, that again, um, uh, it's very apparent that a woman faces, uh, specifically when we talk about, um, you know, what, what, when you go through this, there's a, a, there's a, a lot to gain spiritually. Oh gosh. And, is there ever? Because I think, I think all of us have, have experienced trauma in our lives at some point or another. And one of the things that, that comes out of that is you really know who your friends are and who your family oh. is, right? <laughs> it's when you're at your worst points, oh, your, my God. your friends are still out doing their thing and not even looking back at you. And you really realize what's important in life, you know, um, going through that stuff. I, I've, I've, I've interviewed a, quite a, quite a bit of people over the past decade since I've been uh, you know, helping people create this, this healthy ecosystem. And one of the common themes is the amount of gaslighting people go through. It's all in their head is, is probably the number one phrase that gets repeated. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it is sad. It is very sad, but I think what people hopefully realize through that is, and the reason this podcast exists in the first place is, you know, you, you get this, understanding that we're all in this together. Every single person on this podcast has been through a traumatic experience in their own way. And you see these common themes of gaslighting, of people not understanding and not supporting. But then you always hear that at the end of the story, they're feeling better, which is obviously an amazing thing. But also they've got new friends and new relationships and they're more themselves than they've ever been their entire yes. life. Yes. And there is so much power in that, you know? And I think, I know a lot of people that tune into this, they're, they're at 
they're at this place where they need support and they need hope. And I hope that they find these common themes in these episodes and they get the hope that they need. Uh, How did, how did you find hope through this? Well, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a woman of God and, you know, in spite of what doctors were trying to tell me once I explanted, uh, all they wanted to do was just pump me full of medication. Right. And I said, medication isn't going to help what's happening to my body right now. I'm detoxing. Right. So my dermatologist blew it off as, well, you're just having eczema. You're just having, you know, rosacea you have. And I said, no, no. And I, I, I got, I, I, I was crying in the office. I said, I want all of you to stop telling me how I'm supposed to feel right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to handle this on my own and I'm going to treat this holistically. But thank you very much for your advice. Thank you very much for your encouragement. So I literally went for a moment where my body, like I said, I was one big flare because the toxins were just leaching through my body. And I knew that with each time my body would flare that the, the toxins were releasing. So I remember praying, you know, and, and, and citing scripture that by his stripes, I am healed and that, that God can perform miracles that modern medicine cannot. So I would, I would literally just dive into scripture and just read healing scriptures and then, and, and just completely remind myself that, that, that sickness and ailments and plagues and bacteria and fungus and this that's not the body god created he created us to be healthy and abundant right that whatever you're going through there's a purpose to it and what it did for me was not only did i truly heal without modern medicine i i did it the holistic way and i did it by cleaning up my diet i did it by drinking a lot of water i did it by doing the celery uh, juice fat i did it just by food natural foods what i could eat and I wasn't responding to, I needed to heal from the inside out. And so that's what I did. It took a little bit longer, but I did it. And I'm still, I'm still going through. And in fact, this is a lifestyle for me. So it brought me to my knees where I have never in my, and it removed people, like I said, in my life that the former me had, you know, I was living the Southern California lifestyle. I had big breasts. I had fake eyelashes. I wore a lot of makeup. I did Botox. I did all these things. And I even knew then that I didn't want to do that anymore. It was just all toxic. So when I had these removed, it literally removed. I stripped myself down to who you see me today, a very natural version, a very real version of who I am, speaking my truth, living my truth. And if someone can't accept me for how I look, then that's fine. I I just broke up with a guy because he's like, are you going to ever put on me? I go, no, this is who I am. I I wake up like this, I glow because I'm healthy from the inside out, right? So my spirituality has deepened because of it. The relationships that really matter have have made their their way to me and they will stay. And my mantra was anything that's meant for me will find me and it will stay. It will stay. And, And through this, any dark time, there's always a blessing on the other side. You just have to... If I can encourage anybody, yes, it may look one way, but it doesn't. It's not always what it looks like. It may look one way, but you're being refined. And I felt like I was being refined through the process so that I could be the authentic person that I am today to be who I am, have always been, but was masking it with with breast implants and a lot of makeup and long eyelashes and Botox and all these things. Listen, no judgment there, because if that's your thing, that's your thing. But for me, I knew that's not who I was. And I knew once I had the breast implants removed, it would just be a lot of other things being removed from my life so that I could be here in the true form that I am. And since I've done this, the abundance that's flown into my life, right? The right connections that have flown into my life, the right relationships, my business, even through all of that prospered, even while I was healing I was closing transactions. I closed three the day I had surgery and opened escrow, kept just just thriving. And it's just, it's amazing when you remove those things that no longer serve you, how much better your life becomes, your health, your mindset, the relationships, your business, just life in general. So it was my faith that got me through this. 
10,000% without a doubt. And it's my faith that continues to get me through it when I have those moments where, okay, God, I can't see what's on the other side of this, but I trust you because you got me through before and you're going to get me through again. So I'm just here. Amen. That's amazing. And, <laughs> you know, it's a testament to when you close one door, the right one opens, you know, 10 more open, 10 more, Ten open. more it, opens. It was insane. I mean, it, it just, and you know, what's interesting is because those people who were in my life, who, like you said, that were gaslighting, right. They were the very ones that were like, Oh man, what's going to happen to her. So, yeah, she doesn't have her boobs anymore. <laughs> she doesn't have this anymore. What's going to happen to her. And then all of a sudden they're looking at me going, wow, wow, you, you really, you did that? Well, yeah, I did, you know, but I no longer, it, they just, they marvel and have such doubt because if you're not operating where they think you should be operating, but you're operating on your own terms and they're, they're thinking, well, how is this happening? How, how? Because when you remain true to yourself and don't allow society to dictate who you are in your life, that is where the, the true the true growth becomes apparent. That's that's such an amazing story and such an important topic to discuss with all the societal issues we have. Being true yeah. to yourself is something yeah. that you know really gets what you actually want in life. You know, our mind's a very powerful thing. Oh yeah. I, I want to ask you two and qu two questions that I always ask everybody. Um, and it's such, it's always just such amazing. It's so, it's so amazing to get this perspective. You know, if, if you look back to your younger self before you got sick and all this stuff, what would you tell yourself knowing all that, you know, right here today? Stay true to yourself, regardless of what anybody else says, stay true to yourself. Amazing. And then finally, what is one piece of advice that you would give to somebody who may be suffering in similar situations that you did to help get them through it? Oh, to help get them through that. Well, I would say, you know, keep your faith, whatever your faith is, keep your faith and know that your, your, whatever you decide to do is going to be the best decision for you. And that the people that are in your life will either embrace and support you or they won't. And if they don't, then thank God you saw it now rather than later on going another year, two years, three years down the line with somebody that you know that isn't 100 percent there on your side. So keep keep your circle tight. Remain authentic. Have the courage to do it and know that on the other side is 1000 percent true healing. 1000%. Like I, if I could do it all over again, I would do it twice. 10,000%. I would go through this journey again and again and again and again, because I am constantly evolving. And with that comes realizing who you truly are as a person and what we're truly here for. Just like you said, we're here. We're, we are mere mortals existing. And there's such a bigger planet out there, right? Where we are just doing our part to do our part every day. But until you make a decision to, to heal, you'll never be the best version of who you are. You'll be a shadow of your former self. Well said, Tammy, I want to really, uh, appreciate and acknowledge you today. There's oh, a million things you. you could be doing right now. And <laughs> you, you're giving your, your time here with us to share and impart your knowledge and your experience and everything you've gone through. Um, and I really appreciate you, you showing up today and being vulnerable and opening up and sharing your story because, um, you know, it's not easy to get personal about all these types of details and really stay true to who you are. And, yeah. you know, I know countless others will watch this and learn from it. So I just want to thank you for, for everything today. I I'm available. If anybody comments or reaches out to you and wants to get in touch with me, by all means, I'm, I'm an open book. Absolutely. We'll be sure to share your information in the, in the, the comment section, if you will, if anyone wants to reach out to you. I really appreciate Tammy and I hope you have a marvelous day and good luck and the rest of your, your journey here. Thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity.